Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host, Mark Ronich at Statewide News Service, jbiztechphilly.com. And as you can see here, weekly columnists for the Jewish press. And I'm having a lot of fun doing all of that. And in my column, I write about how government relates to the Jewish community, or it doesn't, as the case may be. <laughs> and I'll tell you, we just finished the legislative session, and with us today is Steve McLaughlin, mm -hmm. an assemblyman from Rensselaer County, Scaticoke, Melrose. So uh, welcome back to The Jewish View. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we need a report card <laughs> if we finish the... Uh, how like, do you, how do you like think the, the end session of went? Well, the end of session, I'd give it an F. I mean, really? the, the entire session is probably a C. You know, really? C to C minus something. It was a very average session. It's so interesting. The, so the shorter list is what you liked about it. Yeah, well, yes. It, well, the, just, you know, the way it ended. How, do, how We ended the way we always end. It was in the middle of the night. It was actually 5 a.m. when we wrapped it up. Literally, you have members uh, fighting to stay awake or flat out falling asleep in their seats because their body has just said enough and they can no longer continue. Uh, so that was m almost a 24-hour day in the chamber. Uh, that's just not the way to operate. And it's actually dangerous. I think I'm fearful that someday somebody's going to leave that session in the middle of the night, whether it's us or a staff member, and they're going to drive home, they're going to they're going to be killed or they're going to kill somebody. Roger Roback, that happened to him when he drove back after the end of session. He died in the, in the throughway toll booth. It's terrible. And I thought it was the, the high, how high the toll <laughs> yeah. was. But yeah. uh, he had a heart attack right there. It's and terrible. That's where his son uh, took over. And... Gotcha. Yeah, so, so, and this just goes on and on yeah. every single year. We do it during budget season when we're getting, when we're rushing to pass the budget and we always do it at the end of session. It's just a really dangerous way to legislate. And yeah. it's not effective because you can barely focus on the words on the page in front of you. So it's very hard to digest an entire bill. So, so how's your room? health doing? I'm you're great. Okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm great. Stronger yeah. than ox. <laughs> good. But you know, maybe that's the reason for the high turnover, would you say? I mean, it's just like it's a funny schedule. You're on for six months, you're off six for six, you know, it's not a regular life. You know, you're that's on, you're sure. off, you're up at night. Yeah, it, mean, that's for sure. It's a different kind of lifestyle. You have to be, um, it's almost like being a baseball player in a way, or I always say to people, it's sort of like being on a movie set, being in the assembly where nothing is happening, you're sitting around, and then action, and everything starts to happen rapid fire. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you have to be used to that, and you have to be willing to accept that, and then you also have to understand that your, your most valuable role is outside that building. It's out in the community is where you're going to do your most good. So. Well, w one of the members who can relate most to that is probably Michael Dendecker, who is an actor by profession. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And he yeah. can relate to the uh, star quality that you're painting the picture <laughs> of. I mean, see, it's very so. stressful. As I say, policemen and firemen all have a high level of stress. You know, you're just driving around all of a sudden, robbery, you know, and yeah. Fire, you said, you know, you see these guys sitting in the fire station, all of a sudden, come on, you know, there's a big fire, and for the next few hours, your, your, go, your go, blood go. pressure is uh, sky high. Yeah, it's similar, but I certainly wouldn't put ourselves in the same category as far as uh, bravery goes, but, uh, but you're right, it's similar. You spring into action, you're going really, really quickly, but then there are hours where you're sitting around mm -hmm. with not much to do, so it's uh, where you're just reading and yeah. keeping up what with what's you, going on. I mean, you give it a C. What would you like, you know, the assembly to have passed? Yeah, so there's quite a few things. The, the, uh, uh, well, there's quite a few bills. And one bill, the, one of the things that I was really screaming about the entire session was uh, my folks up in Hoosick Falls with the tainted water that they've been dealing with and really the lack on this legislature's part to grasp the gravity of the situation or flat out ignore it and refuse to hold hearings. So, in fact, just today, as we're filming this, I just a few minutes ago read that Senator Schumer is now saying that uh, we owe an obligation to those folks in Hoosick Falls. And he apparently, if I can, if I got my, my facts correct there from what I read on Twitter, which is not always 100% <laughs> accurate, uh, that he now supports federal hearings into what went on in Hoosick Falls. So that to me was a really, really big issue that we were dealing with. Uh, there were things that we kind of pushed through quickly, like we always do, uh, without a lot of debate or thought, and uh, or, or without the acknowledgement that there is a, a con to every pro. 
there's a flip side to everything that we're trying to do. For example, the minimum wage was something that kind of sounds good when you hear it. You think, oh, great, $15 for everyone, but with no real analysis of what the downside could be. But the analysis is that by the time it kicks in at $15, that's really $13 in today's dollars. It's not really going to be worth $15 when it kicks in. Well, that's if inflation continues the way, it, well, the way they think it will. But then that's saying, well, where we are now is really not where we are now. I mean, the, the fact is, uh, you know, you, what you are going to see, I believe, and you're already starting to see it, is an, 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 a huge increase in automation, a huge increase in uh, point of sale. Businesses get scared. You know, it's not, maybe you're right technically, but then people just, $15, well, I can't afford it. I got to do something right well, McDonald's away. McDonald's will have a kiosk right. and you just punch mm -hmm. in what you want and you do the work that the clerk behind the counter would do. Right. And they're going to have it where, you know, you could do it. Look, they, had, they used to have full service gas stations. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you, you do it yourself. It's true. Did the world fall apart? No, no it didn't. But there's a, there's a significant number of entry level jobs there for kids that will no longer have them. They won't get that so first they'll have job. another job. We and hope. You know what? They're smarter in technology than we are. <laughs> and if you ever wanted to have someone to build a website, you, they got to be under eight, 16 years old. <laughs> so, you know, they're going to. Not all of them, though. Yeah. The, 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 my, oh. the, the dilemma there is not all of them can do that or will do that. So I think that there's a very real problem that we're going to face, but we'll see. We'll I mean, see. you talk about 50% in Albany here locally or dropouts of high school. These people aren't technological people. They're people without an education. And, they and need, the, it's just all they can do is work at a fast food. You know, you want a hamburger or fries. They need the it's job. Really, you know. And essentially, when we go into McDonald's now, we look up at a board and you're basically right. picking what you want. How hard is it to put that on a kiosk right. and turn it around That's right. to mm -hmm. face you? you? You put your card in, you get your food, and out the door you, you go. Know, so it's a few less jobs at each store that adds up. One of the idea is, I mean, it's radical and it's not going to happen, I know, is separate New York City from New York State. Well, that's not going to happen, but in the legislature, maybe that would be a interesting idea. You know, like, it is expensive in New York City, and they have a point. You mm -hmm. know, how can you live in New York City? Mm -hmm. Everything's expensive. So if you're in New York City, then you can't, is that a reasonable idea? For a lot of things, I mean, I yeah. think that even the tolls, you know, to go to Buffalo, these guys don't have money, the people, the local people. Mm -hmm. New York City, yeah, tolls, $15, $16, and, and the highways are full. I yeah. mean, I guess, I guess they have the money, but yeah. a guy up in you know, Syracuse doesn't have the four or five, who knows, $10 to go on the throughway. Yeah, it's a good point. And then they, the governor would say, well, we did address that because New York City got the 15 and the rest of the state got the 1250 But there really wasn't a lot of economic analysis that went into any of this. It was just like, this sounds good, we're going to do it. What made it really interesting was a year ago, Mayor de Blasio was pushing for, de Blasio was pushing for $13 an hour. And a year ago, it was said by the governor that that's a non-starter, that's never going to happen, that's bad for business. Within a year, it's flipped on its head. He mm -hmm. says, now $15 is great. And he so puts it in his state of the state message. He does state. that with the assembly, too. All the time. He's, and the Senate. You know, the bills that don't come to fruition yep. all of a sudden wind up as his program bill in the state of the state. Yes, that's absolutely correct. So he did it with de Blasio. It's not like he's picking on him. No. I, I don't buy that there's this big feud between the mayor and, and the governor. I don't buy it. If anything, it's all show. But I think, and unless you know something. I don't. I don't I, know. I think that it's a bunch of media hype. I think it sells papers. So they're keeping this stuff going. Because if you listen, if you read the words, it's all, it, there are no quotes. They're always the reporter's words. And there's always, oh, we found out, or sources say, or whatever. And they never really have anyone quoting and the reporter sort of puts his own words into the article yeah. and makes it seem like it's a problem. It's a good point. You're probably more in tune to that than yeah. I am. I'm so. an upstate guy. I'm not paying that. I read the papers. I see yeah. what you're seeing, but you probably have a better take on it than I do. Uh, do you represent Washington County? Yeah, two towns up there, Cambridge and White Creek. Okay, then you have to update your assembly website because it says Columbia, Rensselaer. It should say Washington. No, you know what? It's a, not just Washington. I think it says Green County. Did you oh, ever represent I Green did. County? I did. Originally, I had uh, Albany, okay, Green. Okay, you got to change that and take Green out the, of On the there. Assembly website? I, either the Assembly website or, or some other I'll double check. I'll website. double check. I, that's what it was. It wasn't uh, yeah, yeah, Washington. Mark, very exact. Yes. Well, very I, you know, I find these things, because, but I noticed that you had something provides for the determination 
of actual valuation for the Cambridge School District. Right, that was a, a bill that we weren't able to get passed, but yeah, Cambridge is one of the areas I have, Cambridge and White Creek up there. Yeah. Great, beautiful communities up there. Uh, you also, now what's your view on this uh, brunch bill? Mm -hmm. where you could now serve alcohol earlier? Yep. I mean, are you So it didn't particularly, okay yeah, I'm okay with it. It didn't particularly bother me. Uh, but what bothered me was, you know, you, we're going to push this. We're going to push alcohol sales. I can't get hearings from my folks in Hoosick Falls. So you can drink alcohol, but you don't want to drink the water. And yet you can't get Uber up here. So to me, that was such a absurdity that... You know, we're pushing people to go out and have a mimosa or a Bloody Mary uh, for breakfast or brunch. Okay, but, you know, this, the Uber should have come along with that, I think. And I don't understand well, you how... you don't want drunk driving. You know, no, you no, exactly. The, the no, exactly. alcohol and the driving to go along with it. You right, know, so it's interesting. That would have been smart marketing-wise. But it was interesting <laughs> that the, the, the governor is out there pushing an expanded yes. uh, booze sales That's on right. Sunday. The very next day, the lieutenant governor is in Saratoga Springs talking about the dangers of underage drinking. Right. Which I agree with. It's exceptionally dangerous. But I just felt like one of the big disappointments here was not getting Uber uh, for yes. upstate yes. New York. Yes. And, and I do think there's a, a safety, a public safety component to that. I do think that people are, are, nobody should ever get behind the wheel when they've had anything to drink. We all know that, but we also all know that it happens a lot. But the new, the younger generation on the phones and everything, I mean, I've used Uber. I think it's terrific. You hit the button and they're there within seconds generally or mm -hmm. minutes. And, they're, and it's so uh, a great the experience. what was why they didn't want Uber here? Because the taxi cab drivers don't like it. Well, that's part of it. And uh, sometimes things take a while to, to percolate in Albany, as you know, Mark. And mm -hmm. it takes a few sessions to get things through. So whatever their pushback is specifically, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but I do know that it was not a, a shining moment to not get that through, well, and, you know. I'll, well, I'll tell you what it is, and I think you know as well as anyone. It's cha-ching, cha-ching. Yeah, that's a, yeah, I didn't want to be jaded, yeah. it, but, uh, they, but, you know, a lot they, of it is. Because there's another election cycle coming up. There's more uh, 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 donations, uh, contributions that they want for the next round of, uh, the next round of fundraisers, yep. and you know that Uber and Lyft are going to be lining every campaign coffer that they can to try to curry favor. Well, I would say that's that's probably a pretty good analysis. And, and you know, in an election year, it didn't happen. But then you're right. Next if year, if, if if that's what yeah. happens, and we can track that pretty easily to see where those contributions go. And then next year is a non-election year. Maybe it gets through. I don't know. I hope so. But you know, we'll another <laughs> issue, which is, um, you know, we pushed down on the Jewish view here, and I know the New York Daily News was pushing it uh, for front page five times. It's incredible coverage. Was the child uh, so the, the statue yeah. of libertation should be removed from child abuse? Yeah. Uh, cases. Yeah, I agree. And I, I, I was saying uh, off here, I, I got to double check that. If I remember right, I'm a co-sponsor on that bill. It's Assemblywoman Markey's bill. She's been pushing that very heavily for, and you talk about something that takes some years to get through. She's been pushing that for a while now. I'm supportive of it. I think that uh, that it should happen. Much like uh, in Hoosick Falls, we had a statute of limitations bill related to the water situation. I was mm -hmm. a co-sponsor on that as well. You have to give people the ability to seek redress when they've been when they've been harmed mm -hmm. and so I, I'm supportive of both of those well you know uh, Assemblywoman Markey has been in the legislature since 1999 so she's not a newcomer right and she still can't get it through yeah it's you know, very difficult she, she ranks uh, 33 in seniority wow and I'm so, 86 or something, yeah, you just told me today. I yeah. did not even know. Yeah, I put this little chart together. I will say, I, I did find out I was the number five vote getter out of 150, so that was pretty good. It shows you the difference in the way the upstate turnout is versus downstate turnout. What do you mean, absolute vote? Total you votes. Because every, really, every assembly district has the same amount of, of voters. Yes, it sure does. But you look at um, downstate in some of the city districts, they might be 6,000 votes cast, 7,000 vote cast. Come to upstate New York, you have 50,000 votes. In, the, in an assembly district for an election or 30,000, 35,000. So that was good to see. I think Jim Tedisco might have been number one or two. I think he was two. Uh, so we get a lot of turnout up here. But anyway, uh, it shows you that it takes a while to get things through. I mean, our good friend Harvey Wiesenberg, who left a few years ago, and I certainly miss Harvey, uh, it took Harvey years. And he would tell me that. He said, I've been here you know, mm -hmm. 100 years for Harvey, <laughs> right? And, and he said, I can't get things through. So it's really hard. So I think 
people have a, um, an assumption that if you're in the majority, you're going to get everything you want through. It's not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're in the minority, you're not going to get what you want, but you've, you could get what you want in the minority. It's just you have to take a different path. But the right. minority ma uh, majority members don't have an easy go of it either, mm. which shows you the tight control that the leadership has in both the Assembly and Senate. Do you like Carl Hasty? Do you Very think much. he's a good leader? They so, say he's weak. Yeah, so I, I mean, I read, I read uh, some of those articles. I like Carl very much. We speak. I would tell you I spoke more to Carl Hasty than Shelley Silver. in a week yeah. than I spoke to Shelley Silver in five years. So, I mean, Shelley just wouldn't even talk to you if you were in the minority. He literally would just, at most, he'd grunt at you, and that's it. You got nothing. <laughs> But Carl and I, I mean, I've had a half hour conversation with Carl, you know, in the middle of the day sitting in his office talking about airplanes because his nephew is a pilot. Uh, I'm a pilot, so we have a connection there. Uh, I think he's a terrific guy. As far as the leadership goes, I mean, I'm not in his conference every day, so I don't see what they're doing every day. Um, and I don't know what he's negotiating with the governor and what his style is. So I don't feel like it'd be fair to me to say, oh, he's a terrible leader, he's a great leader. I don't really have a great frame of reference on that. I just know that, you know. The, the, he gives the, you the time of day. Well, the chamber is functioning. Uh, I can sit down with him and say, look, you know, he had said to me a couple weeks ago, you got something to say to me? I said, oh, yes, I do. I want my hearings in Hoosick Falls. And, uh, and here's why, Carl. And I laid it all out and he, you know, he said, okay, I got it, I got it. So he, he will take the time to listen to everybody. And you've been in the chamber a lot, Mark, and mm -hmm. you see him come out and sit down beside members and sit there and talk for a few minutes. Uh, you really didn't see Shelley do that hardly at all. So it's a different style. Whether it proves to be effective, time will tell. I think he misses the, he's a lot younger than Shelley. Mm -hmm. And when Shelley was younger and Carl's age, he would do that. Okay, so it's an age thing. It's a seniority thing. It's sort of like as Carl goes on, he won't do that. I'm sure if he still stays as speaker, you know. I, I want to see if there's going to be a, some sort of a coup or some sort of a oh, let's test the waters, let's test his leadership next year. You know, things like that. Yeah, I'm waiting to see who the rumblings and well, although you know a lot of the legislature, almost half the legislature is there, uh, you know, in the last five years. Right. And that and is young. part of the issue in there is the institutional knowledge has shifted and changed a little bit. You do have a significant number of younger members, whether age-wise or seniority-wise, they're younger as far as being in the chamber. And there's a different, there is this year, there was a kind of a different feel to what was going on. We did have a couple of tense moments uh, in that chamber where, I mean, Charles Barron is an assemblyman yeah. out of New York City. And you know, everything that, that Charles says, everybody's racist and this, and it's ridiculous. But that's his approach to things. Uh, he's an ex-Black Panther and he comes at it from that, from that mindset. That's his mindset, but that's certainly not the mindset of really everybody, most everybody in that chamber. So but it, it makes for some tense moments. Well, let me ask you, he got up on the floor when, uh, when you had this bill about limiting the opioid abuse and he said, when in the 60s and 70s, when, it, when this hit the black community and the African-American and, and black and brown community, I think he said, uh, we have, uh, it was a criminal justice issue. And you had the draconian Rockefeller drug laws and people were thrown in jail. My people were thrown in jail for this for long periods of time for uh, a small amount of, of uh, substances. And he says, now that it's entered into the white community, this opioid abuse, now it's a public health issue. Now, he says, racism is rearing its ugly head again. Were you in the chamber when he said this? I was not this? in the chamber at that particular moment. Diana no. Richardson, mm -hmm. who's also a freshman, echoed his mm -hmm. thoughts. Right. And so, that, and that's part of what's been going on here in the chamber quite a lot did lately. You, would you take offense to those comments? Or? So No, I don't take offense very easily, and I've had people say, you know, I'll be debating someone, and, and that's a word that everybody likes to throw out there. I'm offended by that. Well, I didn't know what else to say. No, 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 that's fine. No, but I'm word. talking about in debate, people will say, well, I'm offended. I don't, I don't care. I mean, if I, you know, I, if, you you're, your shoulders if you're offended, that's on you. That's not on me. If you want to be offended, be offended. But I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Uh -huh. So I wouldn't take offense to what, okay. what Charles was saying. But you wouldn't agree with I him. would not agree with it. Okay. But it would not offend me. I okay. would just fine. say, call it what you want. Okay. If you want to say that, that's fine. And I'm, by the way, all for heavily increasing the penalties for opioid dealing especially. Right. I think the folks that are using this stuff need 
a lot of help. This stuff is ravaging through our communities. So they need all kinds of help. And we did do some positive steps there. But I am also one that says we should really put in some draconian measures, put them back in place for anybody that's dealing that poison. But again, that's Charles' perspective where he's coming from. It's just not my perspective as far as the, the racist part of it. And I think what Charles leaves, out, Charles leaves out of that would be the fact that back then, during the that time, and in the 60s and 70s, the leaders of the black community were asking for these increased penalties. They were fully supportive of those laws because they saw what was happening to their communities and they were being dismantled. And the one thing I would say is, I think we need to move away from this black community, white community. It's, we're a community. It's supposed to be America. It's supposed to be the melting pot. So I think we hurt ourselves when we continue to almost self-segregate that mm -hmm. way and say, well, this is the black community. You never say the white community. It's just, it's, you, yeah. we should just work, our, work ourselves away from that. What was the most disappointing moment in the legislative session for you? Yeah, the most disappointing moment, if anybody saw it, and it was a, it was a, it was a long debate on a one-house bill, yeah. and it started out as a, um, uh, it was basically an, an abortion debate, again, on a one-house bill. We keep bringing it up over and over. And one of our members said something that was probably not phrased exactly correctly. Well, then we were off to the races, and all kinds of charges of racism were being thrown. Who said uh, something? So it was a new member, um, um, Ron uh, said it, Ron, uh, Ron know, I guess Kim? Name, Ken Estrera or something, right? Oh, oh yes, he Castorina. Just Castorina. Castorina, I'm sorry, he got his, he's got from his Staten name. Island. Yeah. He took um, Joe Borelli's place. Right. And so he, so he said something, and you know what, he, he meant what he said. He was talking about the number of abortions in the black community. Uh -huh. And he, you know, he was pointing that out, which is factually accurate. There are a lot of abortions in the black community. So his numbers were right, but what he had said was, you know, this is genocide in your community. And of course, people were gonna get upset about that. I understand that. They were very, you know, very upset. We had about 35 members storm out of the chamber. Uh, everybody at once got up, you know, about 35 members. Democratic them, members? Democratic, or Democratic members. Democrat and he was against the no, abortion. Yeah, yeah he's he his point. very much. And he's saying, look, you're, kill, you're, you're killing a lot of your own babies. So would I phrase it that way? No. Certainly people took a lot of offense to it. And then it became a really racially charged moment for a long time and if you go back and watch that video it's yeah, very it disturbing and my six years I've never seen anything like it and there was all kinds of interruptions going on Jane Corwin was jumping in numerous times Joe Morelli was jumping in numerous times Jeff Aubrey's trying to keep control of the chamber from the chair it was really something and I would that was the most disappointing uh, for me as far as an institutional thing but as far as legislatively uh, the fact that my folks in Hoosick Falls are being ignored yeah. uh, is really uh, beyond frustrating so when Senator Schumer comes out and says we need federal response to this yeah did Chris Gibson also come he out? already has Chris was the first federal official so do you think he had the impact that he got to Schumer and told him that we need this? Or? I'm, I'm sure Chris has been talking to him. Kathleen Rice, a Democrat out of Long Island, who was, was she uh, co-chair yeah. or vice chair of well, the Moreland Commission? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, She was high up on that. Yeah. I might have it wrong about the, the title. Yeah. Uh, and then the DA at the time and now a congresswoman. She's saying we need federal hearings on this. But Chris was the first out of the blocks. I'm sure Chris leaned on Senator Schumer, and I hope he does the same with Senator Gillibrand, because my folks and his folks, they're all our mutual constituents. Ones. We need is, help. Is Hoosick Falls another, another love canal? It's close. It's really close. The water is still tainted up there. Uh, the water is, everybody wants to act like the water's fixed because the filters ins are installed. We do not have a new source of drinking water up there. So there is tainted water flowing to those filters. Yes, it removes the contaminants, but would anybody watching want to rely on filters when they know that the water hitting those filters is pretty highly contaminated. So which, are you advocating maybe the state buy up all the property like they did in Love Canal? And then no, we, no, no, no. We can fix this problem. I'm, uh, we can fix the problem. I think we need a new water source, which I think I said from the beginning, I had said that it should be the Tom Hannock is probably where should, we should be looking. It's about 12 miles away. It's going to be a big project, but it will heal that town because there is no PFOA in the Hoosick Reservoir. Thank God there's none there. So that is a good source of water. So when I got to tell you, we were talking about this before. Um, well, that the bottled water is regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. Tap water is regulated by the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. Right. And the uh, FDA uh, has, allows more parts per billion of contaminants in the bottled water than the EPA allows for tap water. Right. So tap water has fewer parts per billion of contaminants 
from the start. So it's healthier to have tap water, but now you're giving all these residents bottled water, wow. which has more contaminants per parts per billion. Yeah, but it doesn't. some of those contaminants may in fact not be harmful. All of our water has some level of contaminants in it, but PFOA appears to be a whole different animal. So there's no PFOA in the bottled water that we know, yeah, we know of, and I would assume it's being tested, but, uh -huh. but we know for sure that there's PFOA in <laughs> that tap water. Wouldn't you be surprised? Water. I would be, and, and I think that if it gets tested, in, in it was, I'd, be, I'd be incredibly frustrated if that was the case. But I, here's what we know. We know we need a new source. We know that the governor's administration knew for 18 months that the water was tainted because the EPA was telling them it was tainted and telling them that they had to say something to the people. And I think that's what's really hurting the people in Hoosick Falls is the fact that for a year and a half, there you know, have little babies up there that are testing way, way high on their blood levels. You and I probably have a PFOA blood level of about two parts per billion. That's the average American is going to have a really little bit. Really right in our system? There yeah, is just, something there. You, you're going to inhale it. You're going to pick it up in the environment. Right. It's in pizza boxes. Don't, don't eat microwave popcorn, by the way. Well, Stop he, eating that. He doesn't. Do, do it in there. <laughs> 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 um, you know, so it's in the lining of pizza boxes, right. nonstick carpeting, stuff like that. So it's everywhere. They find this in the blood of polar bears. So if the average American is at two, and I have a little four-year-old baby at 117 or 125, and for a year and a half that baby was accumulating yeah. that PFOA, how much accumulated in that year and a half when the baby should have been on, uh, or all, everybody up there, but certainly the baby and everyone else should have been on bottled water. It's very frustrating. And all I'm saying is, Let's hold the hearings to find out what the breakdowns in communication were because they are very readily apparent that there were a lot of breakdowns in communication. Okay. Now, you also uh, are a, you're doing sales for Monolith Solar? A little bit. I haven't done much lately. I've been exceptionally busy this year, so yeah, a little bit. But coming up in the next six months, you might be doing more of it? Hopefully. But Monolith Solar is now moving to Del Mar? That's I think? true. The they've been working on that Vista for, Technology for Park? a couple years. They've kind of had that in the works, yeah. And but they're going to keep the place over in Rensselaer as well. Oh, they are? Yeah. Across from the Duncan? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they'll still be there. <laughs> so it's a growing company. It's good to see. So why can't you, and maybe it's not ethical, again, go over the ethics rules mm -hmm. and stuff, but, you know, Suffolk County in, their, in Hot Pog in their county office building, they have this huge... Uh, solar uh, uh, display, whatever, mm -hmm. right. uh, in the um, uh, in their parking lot, mm -hmm. and people park underneath mm -hmm. it, so it's like a little carport. Sure, but it you know it helps them cut gov uh, cut the their electric yep. bill. Why can't you get the state to do to more do that. of that? I yeah. mean, I asked you know, uh, what was it, Spitzer put in solar panels at the executive mansion. I think Andrew took them out. Mm. Really? I, and I've been trying to get Roanne Destito, the head of OGS, to look into this for me, yeah. and it's taking forever. You know, they can't just go over there to look. You yeah. know, they got to... <laughs> well, for me, I have to be very cautious of any of that. You know, if I got free tickets to a, a picnic, I have to go to ethics and say, can, um, can I accept these? Right. Uh, I have free tickets to opening night at the Valley Cats. I don't go. I pay for my ticket if I go. So I'm very- can I have good tickets? Yeah, I don't even know if I can give them to you. I don't even know if, that's, if I can do that. But um, so I, I note all those things when they come in and I say, check with ethics. Well, just so you know, I'm available if you get it. Okay. Uh, you can use, the good okay? thing is the Valley Cats aren't that expensive. That's so, right, I know. Okay. Um, but I'm very cautious about that. So I have to really make sure that we're not crossing over any lines, even by approaching anybody. I mean, I right. sold solar to a small little village, uh -huh. uh, Stuyvesant Falls, that I represented at the time. And it was a tiny little system, but it was able to power the entire town hall because they didn't use much. Well, I said to them, put it out to bid. You yeah. know, you don't, you don't want to just give it to me. Put it out to bid to make sure. And sure enough, they did. Well, nobody else bid. It was out there. Nobody right. bid. We got the job. And I tell you, it was teeny tiny. Yeah, it was yeah, little. Yeah. I still got criticized for really? that. Yeah, oh, yeah. I said, oh, look what he's doing. He's using his position. Who, who but I'm criticized? the one that said, put it out to bid. But who criticized? Some of the folks in town. Some of the gadflies that might not necessarily but line up with make me it politically. It was nothing. It was much it didn't ado. Make the paper. No, there was no, no reason to. It no was, reason. It to. was much ado about nothing. When okay. I tell you the commission was about two hundred dollars, it was such a small little yeah, sale. It was right. nothing. I said, you know, I'm the one that said put it out to bid. I, I can't know, help yeah, it if nobody yeah. bid. You know. Yeah. You st so it's one of those things like you're allowed to go out and make a living, but then when you do make a living, you're That's subjecting right. yourself to all kinds of criticism. So you have to watch 
a very fine line there. But that being said, we uh, Monolith has done a number of those parking structures. You'll see them okay. over. Uh, Key Bank has a couple, um, and they're terrific. People what love them. What about solar farms? Because there are some houses that are too shaded. Mm -hmm. So if you build a huge solar farm, you can then direct yep. the uh, solar power. We have done them. a number of those. Uh, but New York needs a certain kind of legislation to do kind of sharing where you might buy 10 panels in the field. You own 10 panels, uh -huh. somebody else owns 10, and that uh -huh. power is flowing to your house. That's community net metering. That's yeah. coming. It's on the way, but we don't necessarily have it yet. Massachusetts does. Uh, but it doesn't mean we, they don't do solar farms. They, along with a lot of solar companies, do. But when you see a big, giant thousands of panels yeah. out there, a lot of times what they may be doing is feeding a big business. So it might uh -huh. be feeding every bank branch in the capital district, but right. none of the panels are on the bank branch, but right. all that power is flowing there. It may be feeding a bunch of schools, but eventually you're going to see the ability for homeowners to take now, part in that. Do you ever get into this controversy that they have with the wind farms where some people say, oh, the windmills are artistic, and others say, oh, it's a blight. Every time. And then the solar panels, oh, it's a blight, but others say, oh, but it's good for the environment? Every time. I mean, in every community, they're going to have some pushback. Somebody's going to want it. Somebody's going to not want it. I think it's important that you, if, you, if, it all, you, if it's close to a road, you want to landscape it correctly. If you can put up some of the nice big arborvitae so you sort of block the yeah. view, I think that's helpful. Shouldn't um, every hospital have solar panels on their roofs? Shouldn't every, every hospital be lowering the cost I think so. Having yeah, I think so. But part of the problem that the solar industry it's in, it's still its infancy, but it's growing. So the, it's been the, in its infancy for 40 years. Well, but we've really, the, <laughs> let's say the past that's five the, years. That's the, that's the oldest infant I've ever it, seen. It's true. That's true. It's a middle-aged infant <laughs> at this point. But uh, it, as far as the new generation of it, because yes. it sort of did nothing through the 70s and 80s, but it's really kind of okay. got legs now. Okay. Uh, the problem is the incentives keep changing. So it, NYSERDA keeps changing things. So what the companies are able to do changes on an ongoing basis. For example, uh, a couple of years ago, we used to be able to go out and put solar panels up for literally for nothing on schools, hospitals, uh -huh. churches, synagogues. For nothing, wouldn't cost a dime. And then we would discount the energy. Right. At that point, about 25% off of what uh, National Grid was charging. If they went up, we went up. If they went down, we went down, but always 25% below. The incentives keep changing and changing and changing to the point where we were able to do it for 15%, and then we couldn't even do it because it was just, you couldn't make money. You'd go broke doing it that way. So there has to be some stability in the way the industry is, is working, and that's sort of some of the growing pains that they're still is suffering Is this something from. that you feel you could take the lead on, or would you be criticized because they would say, oh, look, he's promoting legislation that will impact his sales business? Well, you're always going to get that criticism. I, but I think what you, where you get into an ethical problem is when it is specifically helping you. Or it's specifically well, helping so your this company. Is, you know, so you won't gain, you won't benefit financially from it. Right. And, and this would be across the board, across right. the entire state. So any solar company would benefit from And you're just that. knowledgeable about it. So I try to be. So that's why I'm just saying, you know, this could be your expertise. I mean, look, John McDonald, could, who's a pharmacist, could be promoting a pharmacy bill. Right. And he, you know, and, you know, that's not just going to affect his business or right. his bottom line. Exactly. So that's that's the gray area. If you if you if you're helping everybody, yeah. you're okay. If you're just helping yourself, you've got a huge ethical problem, Mark, as we've you, seen in Albany. Okay. Yeah, Mark, we're out of time. You know, but Steve, this is so many times uh, we come and we got to have an annual report that's right, annual that's rate right. of what's happening. So again, you're doing great work for the people of New York, sticking up for them and not Thank other you. interests. So keep going with good health and good success. Yeah. Thank you Continued so much. Success. Thank you.